Hi, my name is Paul Grogan and welcome to the Gaming Rule Pod Blaster Episode 5. This is just a short interview with Tony Boydell, UK games designer, famous for designing such games as Snowdonia, Guilds of London and many others. This content has been created thanks to my Patreon campaign, so if you do enjoy my content and you are considering supporting me, then please check out patreon.com forward slash gaming rules. But let's get on with the interview. So welcome back to the show, Tony. Hello, hello, Paul. How are you doing? Hello, listeners. Yeah, now you were last on a couple of years ago. God, was it really that long? Yeah, we were talking about Guilds of London just before it was about <laughs> to get released, and then it didn't get released. Oh, blimey. That is a while ago, isn't that, it? That is a couple of years ago now. So, yeah, it's, it, it, it's been a while. It has. Um, but, but I basically invited you on. This is a shameless plug, because you've got a game on Kickstarter right now. So I thought, well... It's been a couple of years since I've spoken to you, and let's let's give the game a plug. So, Snowdonia. Indeed, Snowdonia, the third edition. Yeah, when was it? When did it come out? Two thousand and thirteen. Two thousand and twelve. The two thousand and twelve. Yeah, the golden year of board games came yes. out with the same year as uh, Keyflower and um, Zolkin. Zolkin. Because um, Snowdonia was my fourth favourite game that came oh. out that year. Oh, and of course, <laughs> nobody says top four. Everybody says top three. So every time I say my top three, you always rib me and go, what about Snowdonia? Yes. And it's like, well, that was just outside my top three. So what was the third one? Uh, I think Palaces of Carrara was out that year as well, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, not played that. It's anyway, quite, it's quite you, hard, that one. Yeah, I need, I, need to, uh, I need to look back. But there were definitely a number of very good games that came out that year. Yeah. But Snowdonia has gone on to have how many expansions or have you lost count? I uh, kind of lost count. I think... <laughs> I think it's up to about... Well, the trouble is I keep confusing all the ones I'm still designing. So I think yes. it's up to about 14 or 15 in total, including the ones that have been spoiled on the Kickstarter campaign right? Um, and the ones that might be spoiled on the Kickstarter campaign. Oops. Okay. Bit of an exclusive, so... This is the third edition, which isn't being published by Surprise Stare. No, because we're still very small. Um <laughs> Whenever we get any money, we seem to spend it on the next project. <laughs> so we never have anything sort of too much in the bank. And I tell you what, if you went to UK Games Expo this year, which you did, those hotels were so expensive. We probably well, could have doubled in price for next year. I know. Well, I know. This is this is actually quite a serious consideration. Um, yes. You know, should I just drive up every morning first thing and drive home at the end of the evening? Because uh, right. that's cheaper than staying away. So, Snowdonia then. What, Indeed. What's, what's different with the third edition then? Right, well, this is the Deluxe Master Edition. This is right. everything. This is all of the expansions um, and pretty much every single card that's ever been done or even blog posted by myself. Right. I believe at the time of writing... And uh, depending on when this goes out, who's listening to it, it might have backed the campaign. There really aren't very many that uh, are on the snowdoniacentral.co.uk that are going to be missing. This is right. everything. Okay. But it's, it's deluxified components as oh, well. It's deluxified wooden pieces, so they're beautiful. Yeah. Apart from obviously the resources that go in the bag, it's going to be a double sided yeah. board. In fact, that's a stretch goal that's just been hit. Right. So there'll be the traditional board on one side, and then there'll be an alternative layout for the board on the other. Okay. Um, there's promos, there's sort of linen effect stuff, there's designers have stepped in as guest designers and, and put trains in, and I haven't seen most of those, so I, <laughs> I don't know what's coming. There's a competition. Um, we're going to put at least six user, des I say not user, sorry, that's my new job <laughs> kicking in, uh, punter designed cards. There's yeah. a little competition on BGG at the moment. I'm going to pick at least the best six out of that, tweak them slightly with the blessing of those of those guys, and then they will make it into the set as well. This is a monstrous production. There's a yeah. custom insert. The way they've designed it, actually, um, Blage and uh, Kuba at NSKN is yeah. to basically reproduce cards that are needed in a scenario that would normally have been part of the common pool of you know overlay cards and so on just to make it easier to set up a, a game so you would right. literally take out everything you needed for the necropolis railway scenario and yep. lay it on on the board in fact that's right. the other difference the board is bigger so everything goes on the board rather than around it as well so okay so let's talk about people who have heard of snowdonia Yep. who've obviously heard that from a number of people, because it's a well-respected game, that it is good. This is the time to get it, because, as you say, it's got, it's got everything in there. Yep. And this is a game that I was expecting to be uh, quite expensive. 
yes. because it's got everything in there. But a friend of mine has got together in because I think NSK and are doing group pledges. Is that they right? Are. Yep, yep. And a friend of mine said, "Oh, he's got it for like a really good price." So yeah, if you can get together with a group of other people and do a group pledge, the price is very reasonable for 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 what you get in there. It's particularly effective for the guys in Canada, for instance, or the US, where the postage is quite steep yeah. just for the single copy. But I, I watched a particular um, Toronto group start with maybe two or three people saying, I'd like to get involved. Okay. And they, uh, they've hit the maximum of 60. Wow. 60 <laughs> is six zero is the maximum point where there's no more discounts after that. So you can keep right. on going, um, but there ain't no more benefits to be had. But Good grief. I mean, nice. to be honest with you, the base price, just buying it on your own, is monstrously good value. Yeah, considering, as you say, everything that you get in there. Now, what about if you are a Snowdonia fan? Mm -hmm. You know, you've got the game, you like the game. What's, what's there to persuade you to buy this deluxe version? Well, you can jump in at the seasoned traveller pledge, which is sort of you get all the, the new promo stuff that's been spoiled, the stretch goals. Okay. To do with the cards, but you only get those and the new scenarios. Right. Um, and that, that's, a, that's a ridiculously cheap, I think it's $20. $20, which is, yeah, I'm on the page now. So $20. Yeah. And so that's if you've got the game and you don't want to replace the game, you're happy with the game, but you yeah. want all of the new stuff, you can just get all of the new stuff. Yeah, so you can pay $20 right. for that. Or you could pay $66 plus oh, postage, I think it's always $88 plus postage and get absolutely the whole shebang. Right. New components, new everything, new... It, it's... I mean, there are lots of people out there who haven't got everything Snowdonia up to this point. Yeah. But, of course, people are buying the third edition with full intentions to sell their copies of the first or second right. edition and everything or else they've got. pass that on to some, you know, game Indeed. cafe or something like exactly. that. Exactly. So I think there will be quite a lot of... If you're a seasoned traveller and you want to get the Necropolis Railway, there will be copies out there. Yeah. Um... But to be honest with you, we still got a week to go, and I got a rough idea of what hasn't been spoiled yet as stretch goals. Oh, okay, right. So, and uh, uh, yeah, I think to be honest with you, if I, I'm trying to be independent here and say if I was not to me and I liked Snowdonia and I already had it, I think I'd just yeah. go all in. Right. Okay. Now, if I can ask you this question, you don't have to answer it, and I'll edit this out. But the campaign has currently reached two hundred and six thousand, as I'm looking at it now. Pounds. Yeah, two hundred six thousand pounds. pounds. Yes. What did you expect it to reach? I had no idea. Um, okay. I, I thought that we could maybe get 1,500 people. I mean, if you think about the second edition that was done yeah. by Indie Boards and Cards, yeah, uh, that got 55,000, I think, of a 40,000 gold, and they produced, I think it was 2,000 copies off the back of that. But that was the basic game. Yeah. Um, I didn't know. I mean, I looked at um, NSKN's history and saw how great they were. I mean, these guys are, are, are marketers. They've got all the yep. experience. The, I, I'm sure you've seen the videos that have been done. Yes. Oh, the, yeah. <laughs> the, the, the recipes, the, <laughs> the Welsh food that you can yep. cook. The, 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 the Even language if you're stuff. not going to bike this game, if you're listening to this podcast, go online and just watch these videos because they're brilliant. They are amazing. That yeah. video is particularly good. <laughs> yeah, so, How many years did it take you to practice that one? Uh, I've been saying it since I was at uh, secondary school, actually. Okay. It, was, it was a thing that we all used to do at school when I was in like sort of 12 years old. It was a challenge and it took us a long yes. time. But uh, yeah, it's a bit like learning the Rubik's Cube solution as well. We all did those things together. So Right. Okay. So that's Snowdonia. Nine yeah, days to go at the time of recording. So by the time this podcast goes out, probably be eight days to go. Um, you know, one of the best games that came out in 2012. It stood the test of time. I played Snowdonia again. Well, no, I didn't play Snowdonia again earlier this year. I played your next game, which we're going to talk about in a yep. minute, which is mechanically based on Snowdonia. And it still felt fresh it wasn't one of those games which is kind of oh well this was good a few years ago but things have moved on it didn't feel like that so it, it is good that you know the, the the kickstarter is allowing more people now to to get hold of a game that is still a solid game yeah i, I mean the, the core mechanisms are, are, are so solid and thanks to the play testing that we that i did with the guys that I was gaming with while I was working away. I mean, we did such a lot of playtesting. So I look at it and I think, 
we just took every little ounce of fat off that game. You know, yeah. there's nothing there that I think is superfluous. Everything has a purpose within the game. And I think that's why it survived in the sense that it survived, you know, a solo variant. It survived up to yep. five because the core elements are so nicely oiled now. And yep. Alubari takes those core elements and then adds on that thick layer of, of delicious, delicious tea. Yes. Um, so let's, let's move on to talking about this then. This is the game which a lot of people will know as a nice cup of tea. Yes. And there was many discussions for months, because I know you had them with me as well as other people. Indeed. As we can't call the game this because people outside of England are not going to get it. Yes. And then finally, it has a name which is... Alu Bari, a nice cup of tea. I, yes, I, <laughs> so we've kept the name. Brilliant. Well, there's a lot of games out there. Zolkin, the Mayan calendar. Yeah, with the know, subtitle. We'll have a subtitle. And I think I couldn't, every time I looked at the name of the game, Alu Bari, I thought that's very exotic. That The cover looks beautiful. Yes. However, it's missing something. <laughs> it's missing a nice cup of tea. Uh, yes. So it's perfect now, as far as I'm concerned. I am so yeah. pleased with it. Now, what's happening with this game? Well, it's quietly being developed in the background in terms of the art and the design and the layout now. Yeah. Um, and I'm quite standoffish. I have been quite sort of involved with the Snowdonia campaign, but um, I'm trying to get back into seeing what's being developed. I've seen um, mood sheets. I've seen sort of general ideas about layouts and so on. Yep. I'm very and this is being published by Matago. Being published by Matago, coming out yep. of Spiel. Not uh, Kickstarter. Nope. Nope, nope. This so, is so traditional. Spiel 2018. This is the good news because I now know one game that's coming out at Spiel 2018. Because until now, I didn't know anything. But now, <laughs> at least I know one game that's coming out. So, Matago at Spiel. Exactly. I'll be selling it off the stand, hopefully. I'll have some copies to sell. Um, yeah, very excited about it. Yeah. So, I've played Alubari, and I'll be honest with you, I mean, normally I'm not. Because the thing is, I've got, I've now, I'm, you know, I've got you on the podcast. You're the designer of the game, so for me to give my personal opinion on it is is not something I normally do. But I'm going to. I I preferred it because there's a couple of little tweaks in it which I really liked. So it was like, why would I now play Snowdonia when I've got that? Which is, you know, mechanically. What percentage would you say it's the same? 80%? Uh, no, no, I'd say it's two-thirds. Two-thirds okay. the same. I mean, the problem that people have when they were playing it at the Expo, for instance, and at other shows, is that I've only been able to use the Snowdonia artwork. Yeah. So you don't get the idea or the oh, feel yeah, of the it's... atmosphere because it just doesn't present yeah. itself in that way. It, it looks like Snowdonia stuff because it has got Snowdonia clip yeah. art in it. It is literally clip art that you, you did together. But the bit where... And for those people who don't know, but you do know Snowdonia, when you are placing a worker and you're doing an action on one of the action spaces, if you have a T, you can spend that T to give that worker a boosted version of that action. And I really liked that. I thought that yeah. that extra resource um, that you could do. And there was also something else about the weather as well that I preferred. I can't remember exactly yeah, what it bit, was. It's a bit more lenient on the fog, so it doesn't that kill, was it, kill yes. an entire space. But yeah, the T runs through not just boosting the workers, but it's a it's a fairly sort of piddling scoring mechanism on its own. But if you try yep. it, it becomes more expensive, it, you know, more lucrative. If you then cash it in for cards on your contract cards, it becomes more lucrative still. So T runs through the whole thing in the, in the excavation action, in the scoring, in the boosting of power, um, in, in terms of the two games, although they do share that central mechanic, Alubari is a standalone game. So you play Alubari, yes. that's the way it is. The track never varies, it is what it is. The, uh, the tea estates vary, obviously, because there are 16 different tea estates that can come out in different orders and yep. vary how easy it is or difficult it is to dig the tea. But Snowdonia is a system. So Snowdonia you can change by simply swapping out a scenario and putting another scenario in. So with Alubari, there are no expansions, there are no extensions to, to sort of swap it around. It is, it is a standalone game, whereas yes. Snowdonia is, today we're going to play Necropolis, tomorrow we'll play Daffodil Line. The day, in fact, many people have done this. They've tried to play through every single scenario. I think right. R Rado's done it on, on his channel. Okay, okay. But of course, the other difference, I have to say this now, is the other difference um, with Alubari against Snowdonia is that I've actually had somebody do the rules properly for me. Well, <laughs> in terms of me writing the rules and me oh. editing the rules with the guys from Surprise Stare and then getting a little bit of input from a few other people, I've actually got somebody proper in to do it. And yeah, it's fantastic. Good. 
I'm, I'm glad you're happy with that. Thank, <laughs> thanks, Paul. But the Snowdonia, the third edition Snowdonia rules, presumably you've ironed out all of the rules questions that have come up over the years we have. on that one. Yep. That, that's fairly stable now. Yep, it will get a representation because obviously it's going to have to be sitting in there with the rules for the scenarios, yeah. the rules for the train. So it is going to get a big overhaul. But if I had my choice, I would get somebody independent to give them a, a, a look over as well. Just that one last check around the house before you go sort of thing. Yeah, if only you knew somebody who who, who did that, who's already got an SKN as one of yeah. their clients. Yeah. So, yeah, maybe I'll I should put a, a call out on my blog. <laughs> <laughs> I'll expect a phone call from Andre at some point. So one of the questions which people are going to ask, if I have Snowdonia, do I need to buy Alivari? Yes. Because... What, what's your answer as to, as to why you, you're saying yes? Because if you've still got Snowdonia, you like Snowdonia. Yeah. There is not an expansion like Alobari for Snowdonia. Alobari right. started life as an expansion, but has grown to be this thing in itself. If you like uh, Age of Steam and you've got Steam and you've got Railway... Uh, what are these, what's it called? Tycoon. Here? Tycoon, yeah. If you've got Age of Industry and you've got Brass, it's the same thing. Brass Lancashire, Brass Birmingham, same yeah. systems different presentations, different twists and wrinkles within that. So um, if, if Snowdonia floats your boat, then Alubari is very much going to keep it afloat and um, you're going to love both of them in, in, in different yeah. ways. And I would say if you are not keen on Snowdonia, then try Alubari. Because there's at least one person I know who helped when I was doing my um, playtest of the rulebook for Alubari, or Nice Cup of Tea as it was yeah. called then, who didn't actually, he, he said, I wasn't too keen on Snowdonia when I played it, but he liked this one. So for him, th this, was a, this was a no brainer. He would play this rather than Snowdonia. There's bound to be some people that prefer Snowdonia. Yeah. But I think, I think you're right. Although it's mechanically grounded in the same core rules, there are sufficient differences in it. And the fact that the presentation is gonna be completely different yeah. because of you know different publisher and artist and everything else. The, I think if you love Snowdonia, I think you're going to enjoy this one just as much. And I think there is room in a collection for both of them. Yeah, I think Alubari is possibly just a little bit more complex as well. I think it's a little heavier. Um, it certainly felt heavier when I was playtesting it early on. And right. other people playing it were sort of, when they'd finished, they were like, wow, that was a bit deeper than I thought it was. Because the T running through the whole yes. theme does mean that it's not just about digging. It's about digging and getting the tea and then using the tea. And there's a little bit more of a th sort of that kind of resource balancing conversion that you've got to sort of think about. And the super actions give you a really good feedback when you've managed to convert a, a shed load of iron ore into steel. You feel oh, yeah. really good, Yeah. but you've had to kind of set it up in order to do that. Yes, So um, and you've used the tea, which would have got you points at the end of the game if you had kept it. Yeah, it's that it's that balance. There's a lot of great games where you have to sort of give up something at the start and then change your tack halfway through or two thirds of the way through. And I think that's the same here with Alabari. Yeah. You use the tea early, keep it and then use it for scoring later. Yeah. Excellent. Right. So we've talked about Snowdonia, which is on Kickstarter right now, being published by an SKN. Yep. We talked about Alabari, which is going to be released at Spiel Essen in October by Matago. What else have you got in the pipeline that you're allowed to talk about? Well, to be honest with you, I'm not sure I've ever been in a situation where I don't talk about things. <laughs> I, I, can't, I can't keep a secret. I'm hopeless. Um, I've been seeing and proofing the Guilds of London expansion. Right. Uh, the Wards of London. Um, Clemens sent me through some mock-ups for some possible box art, which is looking okay. absolutely gorgeous. For those people who like Guilds of London, it's going to be another 35 or 40 tiles to do with the city and a, and a new way of playing it. So it can play up to five. Right. Um, effectively, you're playing adjacency. So if you've got five players, you've just got a lot of three-player games going on, basically. Okay. Uh, more plantations, uh, a few more cards to top up the numbers for the five players. Some little wrinkles as well, a little bit of separate gold, a little bit of vetoing. So if you don't like the neutral liveryman, there's a way of keeping those little sods out of your guild yeah. when it resolves. So, yeah, there's a lot of that coming on. Okay, I'm so excited. Guilds of London expansion, when's that coming out? I have no idea at the moment. Um, oh, right, that's in that's development. In, yeah, it's in train. It is developed. It's just now being graphicized, if you like. Right. It's being and will out. that be Surprise Stare and Tasty Minstrel? I th I think it's Tasty Minstrel with us having a few copies, like we did last time, I think. Okay. Just to, okay. Yeah. 
Right. Um, yeah. So, they, I mean, there's lots of other bits and pieces, but they're all playtesting-y type stuff. Yeah. But, uh, I think that's more enough, more than enough Ex for me, isn't it? Excellent. <laughs> right. Yeah, I think so. Now, if people want to find out more, you do a daily blog. Yep. And you've been doing this every day for how many years now? Seven and a <laughs> half years. Seven and a half years. So every morning when Tony gets up after he's cleaned his teeth, he does his blog. So at Board Game Geek, I'll put a link in the show notes to this. But basically, if you want to find out what Tony's doing with his life, because um, <laughs> your blog is everything from game related stuff to you getting something off your chest yep to pictures of you with the dog yep um, lego is featured quite a lot <laughs> recently in my blog <laughs> it's definitely a window into your life it is yeah so most of it's uh, absolutely genuine so there yeah. you go yeah you can tell that from reading it you can tell that you've you know put pen to paper without and i don't mean this to sound in the wrong way without <laughs> engaging your without filtering what you do you know you do what i do sometimes you write something then you press send and you're like oh maybe i should have i should have read that back first but it's good because there's nothing bad in there well sometimes there is maybe but it's it's the raw stuff that's coming from you yeah it's a genuine thing yeah absolutely yeah, you get to know more about you know you and what you're doing and things like that so uh, anyway right well that's been about 20 minutes lovely so that that'll do we've plugged snowdonia we've plugged alabari we've talked about guilds of london expansion uh and that's about it super so yeah thank you very much for coming on the show anything else you want to say before you disappear oh just uh hello to everybody and uh let's have a good rest of the summer i think yeah yeah we haven't talked about the weather i was going to open we're talking about the weather <laughs> it's been lovely there you go it has been lovely yeah even though all the plants are dead the, the garden's dead oh. and uh everything's dead but oh. apart from that it's been lovely yeah Anyway, right. Thank you very much for coming on. I'll get this podcast edited and sent out tomorrow and um, I'll speak to you soon. All right. God bless you. Cheers, Tony. Cheers. Thanks very much for listening. I hope you found that entertaining or useful or both. If you do want to support me and help create more content like this, then please check out my Patreon campaign at patreon.com forward slash gaming rules. And as always, thanks to Jason Shaw at audionautic.com for the music used in this podcast. Until next time, take care and thanks for listening.